Hello guys, my name is Logan Kaler. Here is the third edition to our, uh, our series on mayoral candidates for 2023 election here in Boone. Today, I have Tracy Anderson. Uh, Tracy is a business owner uh, and has lived in town for 50 plus, 50-ish 50. 50 50 years, ish years, in which he's owned uh, a business for how long? Uh, Saints Avenue Cafe I've owned for 31 years and TA's Tree Service for four years. Deal. Okay, so today we're just going to kind of follow suit with the last two interviews. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Tracy some questions just to learn a little bit about him, uh, who he is, what makes him tick. And then uh, uh, I'm going to ask him a little more questions about why he's running for mayor and... Uh, some of the uh, hot topic issues around town. All right, so Tracy, let's just uh, let's just start off. Uh, go ahead and tell me a little bit about um, you. I know you told me about how you're uh, your business owner. Um, tell me a little bit more. So I was born and raised here in Boone. Here in Boone, I left for a couple years and went out to Spokane, Washington, as my parents' job took them out there. Graduated out there and moved back. Uh, Went to a couple years of college before getting into the restaurant business. Uh, and I'm still in the restaurant today. Uh, started a tree business also. Uh, I really enjoy the town of Boone and hope I can make a change. Good deal, good deal. So, uh, so what inspired you to, to run for mayor? Uh, I looked I looked at the options of the candidates and uh, I've known Eli for quite a long time, uh, worked out with him, great guy. Uh, Danny, I, I knew vaguely, uh, but I thought, hey, if I, anyone could do this, I could do this. I can run for mayor and uh, get elected. So I talked to a few people and I had a lot of people call me and express interest and say, hey, you need to run for mayor, you can make a difference. And so that's when I set up and did it. Good deal. So uh, what would you say are some of your strengths as a person that would uh, make you a good candidate for, to run for mayor? Uh, my strengths are, I'm, I'm a leader, I'm not a follower. Uh, I voice my opinion, uh, I let my voice be heard. Uh, Another strength is uh, I've kept my business going for as long as I have. Uh, I understand budgets. I understand shortfalls. I understand you need money in the bank. But I understand you also be you also have to be uh, proactive instead of reactive. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the weaknesses that you see uh, in the current? Uh, local government that you think um, could could use some improvement and how do you think that you coming into uh, office would be a good fit to uh, to make those improvements well I'm, I can't really I can't really say anything bad about the current administration because I'm not in the situation to look and see exactly what they're doing wrong or what they could be doing right but one one kind of way you look at it is, hey, they could be doing 98% of the right, and maybe it's that 2% that I could go in and fix and make things better. Yeah. I'm just kind of curious. So I know that that was uh, kind of an analogy, but what, what do you see would be that 2% that um, they might be doing wrong that you could? Well, the 2% is the stuff, not necessarily 2%, I'm just kind of using that as a number. But the things, like the things that I want to go in and change and work for, you know, we need to work on the roads. Well, infrastructure needs to be taken care of. Um, we need to get this wellness center out of our system and uh, move forward. And there's other ways to grow. There's other ways to grow this town. We can build a spec building uh, for a business, a big giant warehouse. When businesses go out and look for things, they want to see they want to see a building that they can move into. They don't have a year or two years to wait for a building. 
Uh, kind of going back to the uh, the wellness center that you mentioned, what is your position on the wellness center? Uh, my position is no, it's been voted down already. Uh, I don't know why we keep changing the name of it to rec center or whatever. Uh, trying to push it down our throats and, and get it passed through. We could, the whole idea of wanting to move everything into one central location is a great idea, but it's a great expense. Why can't we maintain like our little league fields? Let's give them some money and make them better. We can have travel baseball. Uh, I understand they want soccer fields closer together so people don't have to drive across town. Uh, we've got great facilities. It's just, I think they need to be used. That's fair. Another hot topic button is the, uh, the downtown. I've heard it referred to as like the main street, but like the downtown um, growth and health. Uh, how do you feel the, the current administration is handling um, the rejuvenation of the downtown? Uh, it's been a few years ago they started a, a facade improvement where they, after the project is done, they give so much money back, a percentage back to help pay for the cost of it to the business owner. And I think, I think last year they had $50,000 set aside for it. So I think we need to make that number a larger number so more people can have the improvements done. If we want our downtown to look great, let's do that. Yeah. And, and, and that question was in, in no way to imply that there was, that the downtown is dying or anything. Right. I'm a, I've actually, uh, when I had the interview with Eli, he, ma he made mention of how downtown is actually at like I don't know. It's like I can't remember off the top of my head, but 90 plus percent occupancy rate, which is fantastic because at the height of COVID, the downtown, I would have said that it looked dead. You know, there were multiple occupancies, um, several storefronts. If they didn't have plywood in front of them, they were just empty. Um, but now, if you drive down Story Street, I don't think there's a single building or a storefront that's empty. I don't think so. I'm not sure about that, but uh, I I drive through and I don't always pay attention to what's full and what's empty. Yeah. I I look uh, I look a lot at the buildings just to see how they look yeah. and how the business owners have improved the looks of their fronts and how it looks because most people. A lot of people say, hey, we need to improve downtown. So H&R uh, Block just got done with their facade improvement, and it looks great down there. Yeah. Uh, we just planted, they just planted trees in town a few weeks ago. And my only question there was, we forgot about the other side of the railroad tracks. It's still downtown. That's true. That's true. People don't think about that. On the other side of the tracks, you have, uh, you have that strip as also... Uh, a few more businesses over there as well. Correct. So what are some of your goals? Um, hypothetically speaking, you know, there's always a chance you have three people that could be voted into, uh, into office. Um, what are some of your goals uh, as the future mayor and uh, how would you achieve them? Uh, my goals are, my goals are in my mind of what I want to do. But things, I can't say, I can promise the whole world to everyone, but I can't say what's gonna be done until you get in and look at books and see where money is and see how money can be spent or see where money can be saved. And I'm not in that position to where I can do that right now. But you know, I do have goals. Like I said, I, I'm talking about streets. They're, that's one of my big goals is make our, make our streets better than what they are today. Uh, a lot of people complain about snow removal. What they don't know is Waylon Andrews is doing a, a tremendous job. He's got it down to a science. Uh, he makes the call when the snow is out. He's got it down where he can have the whole town plowed in six hours, which is pretty good. Uh, other improvements? 
drawing a blank right now. Um, uh, uh, property. That's something that could be uh, could be talked about. Is um, the amount of of housing that we have available in town uh, is we uh, according to like the interview I had with uh, with Eli is that we have more people needing housing than we do um, available uh, like housing dwellings. It's the truth. We've got a large number of people that commute to Boone to go to work. Uh, why is there a reason we can't have them living here? You know, we need to have, we need to build more. We need to have incentives or tax breaks for people that are building houses like we did in the past. You, you give the builder X number of dollars or you give the resident that's building tax breaks for the first couple years that they're in and make them want to build here. Our property taxes are outrageous. The, yesterday I looked up some stuff and the city of Boone, just say for a $338,000 house, we're going to call that 100% taxes, which is about $5,500 a year. Now we can go to Ames and the same $338,000 $38, house, they're going to pay about 81% of what we pay here in Boone. Now you can go to Madrid and it's less, you can go to Ogden and it's less. So th things need to be looked at. If, if we have such a, a surplus of cash, why don't we work with the people and lower property taxes somehow? Yeah, and, and with this current inflation, the, the, the high property taxes really contribute to that, that squeeze um, you know, on the average person of Boone. You know, if, the, if, if like, like the other day I was at Walmart and I was picking up peanut butter, Peanut butter used to be, you know, four fifty five dollars for the big jar. Now it's like eight nine dollars. If somebody's paying twice as much as they are for groceries, how are they expected to continue to be able to afford property taxes when they're so high? Right, and you got senior citizens that live on a strict strict budget. They they only get so much money, and property taxes the way they are, inflation like you're saying, it's it kind of makes it hard for them to live. So, um, so as a, a business owner, somebody that owns two successful businesses in town, um, how do you, uh, do, do you think that you would be able to have enough time to commit to being mayor? I have a business partner in, in Saints Avenue Cafe and he does day-to-day -day operations. Uh, so he takes care of all that. And I've got great employees out there that oversee everything too, so I don't have to worry too much about what's going on out there. Uh, the tree business is, I work, I like to work only about two or three days a week on that, so I would find plenty of time to answer phones and get back to people when they have questions. And I want to be able to be in the public's eye. Uh, one thing I thought about what would be kind of neat if I'm elected, I want to do a take your mayor to work day where people call and I can go spend two hours at somebody's job and see what they do. And then also at that time when I'm doing that, I can have people tell me, you know, what their interests are, what their thoughts are, what their complaints are, what, what things are going good. Uh, another thing that I, I think kind of needs to be done is we need to be able to televise the city council meetings. Most people have smart TVs or they have a cell phone or they have the internet where you can go on like YouTube TV or something similar to that. And they can watch why they can watch this and see exactly what's going on with the city. Instead of sitting and complaining and not getting anything done about it, they can see exactly what's going on, where money's going, what's what's being brought up, what's not being brought up. And they don't have to get out on, on the Monday nights and go up to the city council or go up to the city hall and a lot of people can't climb the stairs. It's, uh, I, think, I think it would be a great addition to what we're doing now. That's a really good point. Uh, one of the previous interviews I had, they mentioned a podcast. Um, I, I like hearing how each of the candidates uh, is kind of taking a creative, unique twist on how they want to 
communicate with uh, the people in town. Um, I think that's great because with, with the current state of, uh, you know, the media coverage in town, that there, there isn't um, nearly as much as people would like there to be. Um, I think that it's, uh, it would be great to facilitate something like that, whether it be um, more newsletters, a podcast, or uh, uh, take your mayor to work. I like that idea. Uh, I think that it's it's good to bring the representatives of your community um, boots on the ground and actually be able to see what things are or how things are going um, just around town. Uh, I don't I don't know if there's enough of that right now, and I think that'd be good. You've got to be able to get out in public, and you got to be able to go out in the community and listen to people. There's there's, there's not even a question about that. When a new business opens, a mayor should be there, walk on them. You should have every single time someone opens a new business. And I, I don't care if they bring another restaurant to town. Everybody thinks, well, I don't mean to offend you, but it's all right. Competition breeds success. That's all there is to it. What I'm not doing, I could be made better by having restaurants come to town. We've got an empty lot sitting right across the street here. And somebody asked me the other day, what would you like to see go in there? I said, I'd like to see a restaurant go in there. I, being from a small town, your options are pretty limited and you can, you can eat every restaurant in town in a week, but the next week you're going back to them again. And I'm a big believer, I'm a big believer in uh, spending money locally. So I would rather spend my money at a restaurant here in town than go outside of town. Or for that matter of fact, I'd let, rather spend my money here in town at, at the businesses than go outside of town and do it. Yeah, that's good. And, and it's, uh, it's really important for, to keep your money local to help a community thrive. Yeah. There's, yeah. It's good. Well, I'm, I've, I've ran out of questions, Tracy. Is there anything else that you would like to, uh, to talk about, to mention? Uh, the biggest thing I got to mention is go out and vote, November 7th. Get to the polls, get your vote in. Everyone thinks my vote don't matter, but just think of how many people say that. Hey, my vote don't matter. Yes, it does. Make sure you get out and vote November 7th and check the box that says Tracy Anderson. And then Tracy, uh, if there, is there if there's any questions or concerns that anybody who may be watching this or just someone who wants to talk to you, get to know you better, is there a easy avenue to reach out to you with like a cell phone, email, yeah, yeah. Facebook? I've, my cell phone number is 515-290-9471. Or you can reach out to me through a messenger on Facebook. You can reach out to me uh, on my uh, Anderson, Tracy Anderson for Mayor page on Facebook. Uh, don't be afraid to call. I'll take a call. No. All right. Well, thanks for watching. This has been mayoral candidate Tracy Anderson. Thank you very much, Logan.